Hello everybody, welcome to a, another SUP Border video. We are gonna be looking at a really interesting board this year because it's a board that's already won some of our previous 2020 SUP Border Pro touring tests. We are looking at the new Honu Sorrento 126 by 30 This is the new version of that previous board that we've tested. It has had some improvements. It's lighter, it's stiffer than it was last year. So definitely if you're interested in paddling fast, touring and you weigh 70 to 110 kilograms this review is a review you should be watching so running through the full specifications quickly 12 foot 6 long 30 inches wide 5.9 inches thick the volume is 330 liters and the weight of the board weighs under 10 kilos 9.8 kilograms the retail price for this is sitting around 1090 dollars it comes as a package with a bag, a leash, a repair kit, a fin, but you do not get a paddle. That is an upgrade. Honu are available in Australia and now the States, and they are just about to come over to Europe. So for many of you around the world, you are gonna be able to get one of these boards very soon. So the big changes to this new Sorrento are all around the construction of the board. The outline shape, the width, the thickness, they're all the same as the previous board. The construction is where we spent a lot of time and probably a lot of money to try and get this weight of the board down and stiffness of the board up. We'll speak about those in a minute. They've still got the X woven cross stitch, but this year they've really done a lot more work around the rails of the board. You've got welded carbon rails in this board. So they use heat and high pressure and they mechanically fuse the inner rail with a 25 millimeter wide strip put a 50 millimeter carbon rail and then they apply outer layer of pvc along that as well now i can only guess that does take quite a lot of work and manpower to get that right because even when you're looking down the rails of these boards you can see every single line of pvc and the carbon strips and the materials that are going into the rail now without even testing this board, I could see this board was gonna be stiff, but not only that, it's gonna offer a huge amount of durability along that rail. Just because you've got so many layers on that rail itself, it's gonna take a long time to rub that rail down and potentially get any air coming out of the board through the rail. They've also got the stacked carbon stringers on the top and bottom of the board. They did have carbon stringers last year, but they were very much stuck on top of the board. This year, you can't actually see the stringer as well, but you can feel there's a 50 millimeter carbon strip going down the top and bottom of the board. And then it's finished off with a 150 millimeter vinyl strip on top of that, which is why they call it a stacked carbon stringer. Now we've seen a lot of inflatable powder boards and we've tested a lot of inflatable powder boards. But when we see these rails on this board, this is definitely something special. And there's been a lot of work and a lot of time put into those rails. But that's enough about the construction. Let's talk about what this board is like to physically use on and off the water. First off, carrying the board. Another big upgrade for this year is they've done a lot more work to the backpack itself. The 2020 backpack, to be fair, was fairly nice and pretty comfortable, but this year, more reinforcing around the shoulders, more reinforcing around the back, proper waist buckle strap, chest strap. It's the sort of thing you're gonna use and you are gonna be able to wanna carry this longer distances. If you don't actually wanna carry it on your back, they have still opted to include wheels on this backpack. So if you're traveling with it through airports or long car parks, you can easily roll the board along the ground. Because the board isn't actually that heavy, we packed all our kit in the bag and it came at 15 kilos, including everything we needed to go paddling. When it comes to pumping the board up, the board was supplied to us with a GRI HP8 pump, which is a very, very nice, good quality pump, really comfortable handholds, offset foot pegs, and the pressure dial is really easy to read. It's a two-way pump, so you can inflate on the upstroke and the downstroke, and then when the pumping gets hard, you can turn the lever over at the back and just pump on the downstroke. This board is a 330 litre board and it is a two way pump. The pump isn't the biggest pump on the market, so it is an average time to pump up your board. It's not the fastest, but it's definitely easy to put the air into the board. Talking about the amount of PSI or air to put into the board, they recommend 16 to 20 PSI. And for most of the test, we pumped it up to 18 PSI, so it sits nicely in the middle. It's a super easy inflation process though. One valve at the front there, clip your pump on and start pumping. No extra cylinders to pump up, no other bladders to pump up. Very simple and quick to inflate in that sense. When your board's all pumped up, you can turn the board over and you can fit the standard US box touring fin. 
The US box fin systems, a really standard universal fin box, really quick and easy to install. It comes with a, a tool system that you can do up with your fingers. And the nice thing about having that fin box on there, it means if you want to change and upgrade your fin, you can put any standard US box fin in that fin box. Honey do supply a good quality 10 foot coiled leash with the package. There's a few different choices there, a few deerings on the left and right of the back handle. Quickly fix it on and you can get on the water. When it comes to carrying your board onto the water, you've got a few different options of carrying it. If you're with a couple of people, obviously you can get somebody to help you carry it and you could be carrying the front, they could be carrying the back, or it's got a nice central handle that is balanced in the middle of the board, which is really key to see. A very basic thing, but many brands do fail at this very simple hurdle. It's a nicely padded handle that you carry at moderate to long distances, but if you're carrying it really long distances, I suggest putting it in that really comfortable backpack. Talking about what the board feels like on the water, the first thing you'll probably notice will either be stability or glide because this board has a good combination of both. Because it's 30 inches wide, it offers you a comfortable amount of stability, but it's not too much width to the board that's gonna slow it down. So it offers it a good amount of glide as well, which a lot of you are looking for in these 12 foot six boards. Just remember, you could be entering a race with these boards. You could be getting into touring, day cruising, fitness paddling. There's loads of stuff to do with this. So if you're going for a board around 30 inches wide, it's gonna offer you the best of that stability versus good speed and glide. Because it's a relatively flat board and it's rock aligned, that's the profile of looking the curve of the board underneath it. It offers you a good amount of glide. Most of the board is it touching the water. So you're using the full water line length of the board. The outline shape is the same as last year's board. You've still got a little bit of width up towards the tail there, so it makes step back turns and maneuvers when you're walking back to the back of the board, very easy to do. It's pretty much the perfect outline shape for the multi-sport, fast cruising, touring, and maybe a little tiny bit of racing as well. If we talk about the thickness of the board, remember this is a 5.9 inches thick board. So basically a six inch thick board. You're gonna be floating a little bit higher out of the water because of that opposed to a five inch or a four inch thick board. If you're gonna be loading that board up with touring, putting dry bags at the front and the back, or if you're a heavier paddler, that six inch or that 5.9 inch thickness board is gonna really help you. It's gonna offer you a lot of stiffness obviously, but it's gonna give you a lot more volume to keep your feet and your gear dry. If you're a lighter paddler, maybe sub 65 kilos, you might find using a thinner baseboard will offer you a little bit better performance or it will offer you a board that isn't so corky or floaty out of the water. Because after all, if you're a lighter person and you're standing on a higher board, it's not gonna sink in the water so much. But this extra thickness offers a huge amount for the stiffness and that is what we're gonna speak about now. This is a really big and important point to talk about. So we put this board for our deflection test like we do with all our inflatable paddle boards. If you're unaware of it, it's a gap of 1.5 meters apart and we put 75 kilograms of weight in the center and then we measure how much the board bends or deflects. Now, on average, most boards now, they're getting stiffer, they're sitting around 12, 13 millimeters. The stiffest board we ever tested, I'll put the name out there, was a Nash Maliko and that dropped seven millimeters and it was pumped up to 20 PSI. Now this new Sorento with its new rails, new stack stringers, at 18 PSI, it dropped nine millimeters. So it's getting right up there at the stiffest board on the market. But at 20 PSI, it only dropped eight millimeters, which is only one millimeter behind the stiffest board we have ever tested. But put this into the equation, this Sorento is three kilos lighter than that stiff Nash Maliko. So there is a huge bow Nod of the hat to the Hunu guys to say, well done on that. You have a very stiff and light board. That is the stiffest and lightest board we have ever tested. Congratulations, there'll be many brands that will be scratching their heads and slightly annoyed about that, but well done to you guys. You have made a very stiff board. So if you're looking for a stiff board for performance, you're a heavier paddler, putting more weight on your board, but you still wanna keep the weight down, there is a very stiff and competitive board to be looking at. Anyway, let's move on to some other features that they've got on this board. Looking down at your feet, you've got your nice deck pad, you've got handles everywhere, you've got multiple bungees so you can put lots of different cargo in. It's nice this year that they have incorporated a raised kick pad. That was one of our negatives from last year. So that now has a kick pad at the back of the board. 
great if you're more of that racer or that maybe weekend racer, you wanna get more into the step back turns, that kick pad at the, at the back there is a raised EVA pad. You can get your foot against. It's really easy to reference where you are on the board and do your step back turns. It's offering a little bit more performance for people opposed to the last year's Sorento, which didn't have that kick pad. Just like last year's Sorento, the fixtures, the fittings, the quality of the handles, the quality of the bungees, the quality of where the eyelets are cut in through the deck pad is all really, really good. There was one small mark we noticed around the front of the deck pad. You might see if you look very carefully, it's very hard to see. There's a slight discoloration where there may be a bit of glue got on the front of the deck pad. We did actually contact Honu and ask them about that and they were very, very annoyed that that got through their quality control. And I think somebody in the factory might be getting a stern talking to at the moment, but they offered me straight away, if that happens any of their boards, that would be a straight warranty. So it shows you how much they're gonna be looking after you as well. We might as well bring the warranty thing in there because they do offer a two year warranty with a plus two year repair service as well. And that is now valid in the, U the US as well as Australia. And I think they're gonna be trying to do that into the European countries as well when they get over to Europe. We saw it last year, Honu do have a high level of finish on all of their boards and they do expect a lot from their manufacturer and factories. Please, if you've got any feedback from your Honu boards, let us know as well. I know a lot of you are getting onto them now, especially now they're in the States. Please get, let us know your feedback about all of those boards. But moving on to packing your board away. So packing it away the Sorento, what is it like? Well, it's super easy to deflate. There's one valve you undo at the front. You can fold the board over around the fin box. Be careful not to fold the board across the fin box. Always make sure you fold it around the fin box. And then it sets you up to roll the board up nicely and finish off by squeezing all the air out. Comes with a compression strap, goes in the bag nice and easily. Lots more compression straps in the bag. The bag was big enough for us to get this bigger board in, so there's no problem there. There wasn't loads of extra space. There's enough space there for a few towels, a wetsuit, stuff like that. Maybe not as big as some other brands on the market, but to be honest, that isn't a bad thing, having a bag that fits the board really nicely. So we already touched on earlier the weight of riders that could be using this 70 to 110 kilos sweet spot of paddlers definitely 80 to 95 100 really comfortable to paddle to take you longer distances or if you're touring and you're a lighter paddler you could easily get 30 or 40 kilos of weight on this and you could be weighing 65 60 kilos as well and bringing that board down lower in the water which is going to offer you that better paddling experience what else could you use this board for? Well, you could use it for racing, as I said. Definitely is there for touring, day touring, fitness paddling. You could even catch a few little waves with it, but it's not designed for that sort of thing. It's designed to paddle fast and far, like Honu say on their website, and it is a really good all-round shape to get you into those multi-sport disciplines. The ability of riding that needs to get on it, you could get on it as a first-time paddleboarder if you've had three or four goes on a paddle board before. If you're really comfortable on a board that's maybe 32 inches wide, 31 inches wide, then this board is gonna be a nice jump down. For the intermediate advanced paddlers, it's gonna be no problem at all, because as I said, there's a good amount of width there, but it still offers you a nice bit of glide and speed with that width. Before we finish off with some negatives and a summary, a little bit more about Honu. Honu have been around a few years now. As I said, they started off in Australia, now they're in the States, and they're very soon gonna come over to the European countries. A lot of you are very happy with Honu and the feedback we've had so far. The boards that we all saw last year were very, very good quality, and they were still light and stiff. Then this year's boards have only got stiffer again. The environmental message behind the brand seems very genuine. They're trying to do a lot for the environment. The packaging that comes in the board is really good. Paper wrapped in the board. The information about the board is in a biodegradable plastic. Apart from the plastic that comes around the pump, everything else is really looking good for the packaging of the board. And also because they've got that two year plus two year free repair warranty, it shows that they're really happy to put their money where their mouth is and they wanna keep your boards going for as long as possible, which is really, really important with all these inflatable paddle boards coming out at the moment. Looking at cons and negatives, yes, there was a small mark on the front of the board, but as I said, that's a straight warranty. The only real negative for us is this plastic-based touring fin. 
The quality and the level of finish of the board is so high, I was a bit disappointed with this cheaper plastic fin. It's the sort of thing I wouldn't expect to see with the quality of the board, but it's something you could easily upgrade because it comes as a standard US box fin, so you could upgrade your fin in the future. And the only other thing for us, which is more of an observation, is the nose shape itself, we did think is a little bit bulky for, again, the quality and the style of the board. We've actually said this exact same thing with other brands. If you look at the side profile of the nose, it's quite a thick nose and it does sometimes catch the water as you're punching through any sort of choppy water. If only you could actually slim down the thickness of that nose a little bit, it would only offer the board even more performance. It's more of an observation and maybe something that we would guide to Honu to hopefully improve in the future. It's already a well finished off board, but little things like that will make the board perform even better in more water conditions. So finishing off with some value for money and a summary of the new Honu Sorrento for 2022. So this is more of a top end price point board. It's not as expensive as some of the most expensive boards on the market, but you are getting a board that's equally at that level. And that's proven with the weight and the stiffness of this board. If you're looking to get a faster touring or cruising or even an entry level race board, then the Honu Sorrento is a board that a lot of you should be looking at. And you're going to be able to see that now, Australia, America, and hopefully very soon in Europe. We do really like seeing already test winning boards like this improve into the next year and that's exactly what we've seen with this new Sorento. I think if you're into that fast touring cruising sort of market and you weigh 70 to 110 kilos, this is a board that needs to be on your list for 2022. It is also worth a mention that we did paddle the board with the Honu Bamboo Carbon 12K paddle. If you're also looking at maybe upgrading or getting a nicer paddle or maybe getting the paddle extra as the package with Honu, definitely these paddles are worth looking at as well. Very nice, well balanced, nice blade shape and good for many paddler weights. If you're not already watching this video on the full SUP border site, make sure you watch it on there. There's loads more information and photos about the board in review. But until next time, we'll see you on another SUP border video real soon. Thanks a lot.